I am eating only meat for the next 30 days. I have a chronic disease called GERD. And apparently this so-called carnivore diet promises to be super effective at fixing gut issues and autoimmune issues. Since moving to the eastern part of the world, my GERD has gotten a lot worse. And recently I have had problems with my digestive systems. So what can you have on the carnivore diet? You can eat anything that is or comes from the animal. That means you can have red meat as steak and also ground beef. You can also have white meat as in chicken and also fish. You can obviously have bacon. You gotta have bacon in your diet, of course. <laughs> you can also eat things that comes from the animal, which is like eggs and also low dairy products as in butter, ghee and kefir. And when it comes to spices, I am only having salt. You're probably wondering, what about the vitamins and minerals that you usually get from vegetables? Well, carnivores believe that they can get enough vitamins and minerals from eating animal organs, especially beef liver. Beef liver is one of the most nutritional things you can eat. I know, it looks delicious. I am going to give you the result at once. So did this diet help me with my symptoms for GERD and also help me improve my digestive system? The answer is yes. This diet got rid of all my GERD symptoms, but and also my digestive system haven't been this good in many years. But I am not gonna lie to you guys. I was and I still am very skeptical to this diet because this diet goes against everything I have been told and taught when it comes to nutrition and health my whole life. And I feel like it's so difficult to really find out what's the best diet is when it comes to health because there are so many people that say different stuff and so many parties that act different way. They all do it because they have their own self-interest. And for us regular people, it's really difficult to navigate through that and actually find out what is the best diet so this video is me trying to be as objective as possible to see if this diet is the diet that is most optimal for health productivity exercise and well-being let's go first meal on carnivore diet we got ground beef 80 20 scrambled eggs two slices of bacon grass-fed butter, butter. <laughs> uh, and some uh, pink Himalayan salt. And you're probably wondering, why the heck am I wearing no t-shirt while eating? Really good question. The reason I'm eating beerless is because I noticed like almost every carnivore eaters out there, they eat without their t-shirt, regardless of the weather. Listen, I didn't make the rules, I just followed them. So let's dig in and let's enjoy some food. Bearless. Hey two, this is lunch, my first meal. Before I dive into what I'm getting, I just want to say I woke up this morning and I tried to go to the stool and just let me just say it like this. I didn't have a ton of success because there were nothing going on and I sat there for 30 minutes. But regardless, let's change the conversation completely. Let me tell you about what I'm eating for lunch in day two. I have three eggs, I have, uh, these are not bacon, obviously they do not look as good as bacon and doesn't take as, taste as nearly as good as bacon. But these are beef short plates uh, and also I have 300 gram ground beef. Day 3 update, woke up this morning, went to the stool and I actually got some action. Uh, nothing major though, just like a couple small meatballs. Uh, <laughs> talking about meatballs, I'm actually cooking up some meatballs right now and I'm gonna have that for breakfast with three eggs and some short plates. I think it's arrived. Yeah, it's here. Damn, I'm not gonna lie, even though I paid for this, I kind of hoped that it wouldn't come. And I'm not talking about this short plate. Nor am I talking about these ground beef or this ribeye. 
Wow, this is... This is kind of expensive, isn't it? I'm gonna check how much money I've used thus far. Yeah, being on a carnivore diet is expensive. I can definitely tell you that. So, we'd really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button because this is a fortune for me. <laughs> but what I am talking about and what I was hoping that wouldn't come is this. I know you can see it, but this is grass fed beef liver. Ew. I've actually never eaten an uh, organ before in my whole life. But since I'm not taking any supplements, I gotta eat the liver. Because apparently, liver contains a lot of the mineral and vitamins that other normal beef does not. It's actually one of the most nutritional food that you can have from the animal kingdom. So that means even though I really don't want to, I gotta eat some beef liver. I'm not gonna eat it raw though. I'm gonna start eating it cooked. Maybe if it's good or if I can bear it, I will eat it raw later in this challenge for you guys. All right, this is day four. This is breakfast. We got salmon, ground beef, and also short plates and a liver. Beef liver. Let's just get right into it. Let's just do the worst, worst thing first, which is the beef liver. Oh man, I need to actually kefir this. I'm gonna spill it down with kefir right from the bottle because I'm a caveman. That's why I do carnivore. Liver. Oh, in the beginning was that bad, but then it hit you with like real, real weird. Like, ooh, that was disgusting. How do people do it? Hope it gets better. Oh, jeez, that's such a weird taste. I need to clean my fridge. This is going to be hard. <laughs> We're gonna start with the simple and most obvious ones, which are vegetables. These are potatoes, purple sweet potatoes. Those are actually very healthy for you, I believe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if anything is healthy for me at this moment. Avocados, those are actually fruits, not a vegetable. So avocados, goodbye to you, my friend. Fruits, oh, I eat so much fruit, man. I'm gonna show you. These are my fresh fruits that I have in my fridge. And these are my frozen fruit that I use to make smoothies. We have mangoes, we have dragon fruits, bunch of mangoes, dragon fruits, and we get thrown away. Have you guys seen the documentary on Netflix, The Game Changer? Well, I have, and after watching it, I went vegetarian for one whole month. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it made me feel great physically. Eating vegetables have always made me feel energetic and awake, but eating vegetables have never really helped me with my GERD or gut issues. The only thing that really have helped me with my GERD is medicine, and intermediate fasting. But I read so many success stories about how this carnivore diet have helped people fixing different type of gut issues. People who suffer from bloating, IBS, GERD, UC, and even Crohn's. And what's frustrating with these diseases is that if you go to your doctors with these diseases, many doctors will just prescribe you drugs to deal with the symptoms instead of focusing on resolving the root cause of the issues. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to live a restrictive life where I'm dependent on prescribed drugs. 
And when it comes to diet, it's such a jungle. It's so difficult to know who you can trust. And especially knowing that every food company have their own self-interest. And same with the medical companies. They definitely have also a self-interest. And what's funny about this whole thing is that both the food companies and the medical companies are funding a lot of the research and studies. So a lot of the studies are biased towards the funder's interest. So that's why many studies are contradicting each other because some study might say meat is the problem. Some study will say vegetables and seed oils are the problem. The reason for that is because there are different companies funding these different studies. So it's really difficult to know who you can trust. And that's why I'm doing this diet. Not because I think eating meat and only meat is the most optimal diet. The reason, why, the reason why I'm doing this diet is the same reason why I went vegetarian one year ago. It's because I want to see what is the most optimal diet for me. I'm also a huge believer in that people react differently to certain type of food. But we should all avoid the food that causes us inflammation. Because if you think about it, people in Okinawa where the women live the longest and people in Sardinia where the men live the longest, they eat completely different food and dishes. But they still follow their traditional diet that they have been eating for generations that their body is obviously accustomed to. So I think we react differently to food. And this might be a stupid example, but you'll get the point after this. So my friend Johannes, he can't tolerate gluten. If he eats glu gluten, it makes him feel bloated and it messes up his digestive system for days. But he can drink as much milk and eat as much cheese as he wants with no problem. When it comes to me, I can eat as much gluten as I want. I can eat bread, pasta, no problem. But as an Asian man, if I get in meat dairy, my tummy will go bad for a couple of days. So I don't believe there's a single optimal diet that fits us all because we are all different and we react differently to certain food. But that being said, there are no secret that processed sugar, alcohol and being overweight is objectively really bad for your health. And I think removing those things or fixing those things have a much greater impact on your health than any certain diet. Another liver. Let's just start with the worst, which is the liver. I'm also having a cup of kefir, which I'm gonna use to spill down the liver taste. Damn it. Right, one, two, three. Ew. Man, the taste is just... If I wasn't filming a YouTube video, I would have never done this. Or I would have quit as soon as I tasted the liver. It's... Yeah, you gotta try it to know how it tastes like. It's, it's a weird taste, man. I've almost been a carnivore for almost a week now, so I want to give you guys a little bit update of how it's going, especially with my gut. My gut is the main reason why I started this diet, so I wanted to give you guys a small update after almost being a coroner for a week if it have improved my gut situation. So I have acid reflux and I've had it for many years, uh, but lately it's been really bad. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's been waking me up during the night. I can't control it. I burp like two times every 10 minutes and uh, sometimes it's so annoying that I don't know if I'm burping or I'm gonna puke. So lately it's been really bad. And also since moving to Bali, I also feel like I have had a lot more gas in my belly than I used to have. I'm not sure if it's because of the diet or because of the bacteria here, but I just feel like I get cramps in my left side of my belly because I got so much gas. So since starting doing the carnivore diet for almost a week now, uh, my acid reflux have gotten a lot better, which I'm really happy about. Uh, I'm not really surprised though, because I read a lot of success stories about how this diet fixed a lot of gut problems, especially, especially, especially 
acid reflux. When it comes to the gas, uh, I still feel like I got a lot of gas and I still get cramps in my left side of my belly. So that haven't improved yet. Hopefully it will improve. So the two things that lack about this diet is fiber and vitamin C. You basically get nothing of those. And I haven't personally noticed any symptoms of lacking vitamin C yet in these first six days. And when it comes to fiber, I have personally not had any problem going to the stool yet. It's actually the opposite problem I'm experiencing, as many experience while they begin their carnivore journey. Let's just say it like this. Like Joe Rogan says, there's no safe fart in the beginning of your carnivore journey. But the absolute worst and most difficult thing about this diet thus far is the temptation of other food. Because I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I loved steak and I loved eating ground beef and I love bacon, but eating the same food with no variation get really boring really fast. And I live in Bali here and we have so much good food here. We have great sushi, you can have great Mexican food, good pizza, great pastries, and they are all really cheap. And fruits too, fruits and honey. Really great local fruits here that basically cost nothing. And what's funny is that a lot of people in the carnivore the community says that if you get tem tempted and you eat, eat organs, the temptation will go away. And for me, eating disgusting liver just makes me more tempted to like get sushi or get other food because liver is so disgusting. Uh, <laughs> I really hate liver. But regardless, I'm gonna continue with this diet. I'm not gonna cheat on this diet for you guys. I'm not going to fail this diet. I'm not going to cheat on you guys. Almond croissant, man, I miss pastry. Oh, well, let's go home and eat some eggs and bacon. They ate breakfast. We got six strips of bacon, delicious. About four or five eggs, I can remember. And uh, an overcooked ribeye, which is really sad. I wasn't paying attention, damn it. Oh well, and I'm gonna have a lot of butter with it. I've learned that I feel a lot better if I eat a lot more fat than is recommended. Uh, like if my fat intakes are double as much as my protein intake, talking from a calorie perspective, I feel a lot better. And also, uh, it's also apparently good for the stool. Talking about the stool, I haven't gone to the stool for three days now, I think, which is quite worrying because I'm not used to going, not going to the stool for this long of a period, but I don't feel constipated. I feel completely normal, so I'm not sure what to believe here. <laughs> Today is a liver day. Yay. And I want to give you guys a little bit of an update, and this is kind of embarrassing. But I'm gonna just be honest with you guys. Since I was seven years old, I've never, ever, ever gone a day without farting. Not once since I was seven years old. Seven years old. And in these past two days, I haven't farted once. I farted zero times. I've been to the stool, but I haven't ripped out a gas. And that is so freeing. I never realized how freeing it is because I don't have to hold anything in or I don't have to leave a certain area where I can be alone to rip one. It's a freedom I've never expected that I needed, but I freaking love it. Dinner time. And today we have beef liver, ground beef, 
steak made of beef and we also have salt that spices up a little bit <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you guys this diet have drastically improved my gerd and also my gut health thus far i barely have any heartburn anymore and also even though i go to the stool every second and third day i never feel constipated nor do i have any gas in it anymore so the reason why i think the carnivore diet have helped so many people fixing their gut issues and also autoimmune issues is because I think it's an extreme elimination diet. What that essentially means is that since you are only eating meat and one type of food, you are removing all the food that could potentially irritate you or cause inflammation. But even though this diet might have fixed my GERD, I can't see myself doing this diet long term. The reason for that is because I want to live my life and this diet is just too restrictive. Food for me isn't just fuel, it's something social and eventful that I do with my friends and family. It's a big part of my life and eating just meat and salt make it really difficult to enjoy that part of life. So my game plan as of right now is that if this diet fixes my gut issues after 30 days, then the next 30 days I will slowly integrate food that I like one at a time to see how my gut and health react to each individual food. My goal in the end is that I have a variety of food that I can eat and enjoy that doesn't irritate my gut so I'll have the same benefits that as I would have while being on a carnivore. I think as of right now this is the most sophisticated and also the easiest way where we can find a diet that is most optimal for each and every one of us that will give us great health benefits but at the same time where we can enjoy our life because eating just meat and salt it's sad man so if you want to know how a custom elimination diet is done hit the subscribe button and i'll show you very soon liver let's go damn it the food got cold i talked too long Ribeye and burgers for breakfast, not complaining. Cooked in ghee, of course. For the people that don't know, ghee is like a really fatty uh, butter. Excellent for cooking if you need to get in your fat. Breakfast devoured. That might have seemed like as a massive meal, but honestly, I'm still kind of hungry. I'm not completely full. And something I've noticed is that I can eat like a lot of food in this diet, but I'll get tired of food before I'll get full of the food. So what I mean by that is that I'll, I'll, I don't want to eat more beef now, but I could eat more beef, but I don't want to because I, I'm tired of it. <laughs> and something that's been really interesting these last days is that I'm not sure if it's the diet or if it's the lifestyle but I just feel so much more stressed out and not as happy as I usually am I'm not sure because it's I don't get carbs and I don't have feel as energetic as I usually does or that my training has suffered because training is a huge part of my life to keep me happy I'm happy that well, I'm one third of the way through with this challenge am i going to continue with the carnivore after this i don't think so i'm not sure but i don't think so just got a massive delivery it's a lot heavier than it looks it's about 12 pounds of meat in there let me show you this is about 5 kg of grass-fed special ground beef that I specifically requested. These are 60-40 ground beef. 40% fat in ground beef is really difficult to find. And if you wonder why I wanted 40 gram of 40% fat of ground beef. So in this diet, it's really important for me to be in ketosis. And I'm really tired of eating 
a lot of butter. I'm kind of tired of eating butter. So I want to have more animal fat and also animal fat have a lot more minerals uh, than just regular butter, minerals and vitamins. I'm gonna eat these 12 pounds in about 10 days, I think. That's my goal. Day 22, so today is liver day and we have the usual. Day 22, almost a month now and what I can definitely tell you is that this diet have really helped me with my focus and when it comes to work. I just feel a little bit more locked in and it's much easier for me to enter a flow state of mind when working than before. But there's something I gotta tell you about this diet is that your cardio definitely suffers. So recently I've been increasing my fat to about 75% fat and 25% protein of my total calories. And it had definitely helped my workout, but only a portion of it. My strength workout is as good as it was before when I was on a regular diet, but my conditioning workout is still as bad, if not even worse than it was when I started this diet. So definitely notice that even though my fat consumption is high, my training is still flat when it comes to the cardio aspect. But my strength training and regular training that is not intensive, it's completely normal as it was before I started doing the carnivore diet when I increased my fat. Day 22, we have liver today. Let's go. I undercook it a little bit on purpose to get me ready to eat a raw liver. So let's see how this goes. Man, I really hope that liver would be like a fungus that it would grow on me. But it definitely haven't grown on me. Oh, how the heck am I gonna freaking eat a raw liver? I need to find a way to work around it. I want the beef strip on grass fed. Uh, can you choose one with a lot of fat for me? Oh. So I've been a carnivore for almost one month now, and I feel like I have a really good understanding now of what the benefits are and the disadvantages are while being on this diet. So I just want to give you guys an update of how this diet has impacted my gut, my health, my training, my productivity, and also my lifestyle. Okay, so this is what I always get. A massive strip loin steak with salt, no pepper, medium rare and also three beef sausages. I know what you're thinking. Those are some girthy sausages. Well, that's just how I like them. Medium rare, perfect. Mm. <laughs> so freaking good. So I want to give you guys my truth on this diet thus far. And let's start with the gut because that's the main reason why I started doing this diet. And my gut and overall digestive system haven't felt this great since I was a kid. And I'm not exaggerating. I go to this tool once every second, every third day now, and I never feel any constipation, bloatiness or discomfort. And I, I, I don't even have gas anymore. I can remember last time I had a fart and I can't remember either last time my gut or digestive system felt this good. It's gotta be since I was seven years old, I never felt this good. So this is almost a completely new sensation for me. Also, my productivity this month have skyrocketed. I have gotten a lot more done this month when it comes to work than what I usually do. I think the reason for that is because I don't get any carbs anymore. So I don't get any glucose in my diet, which means I have stable energy flow throughout the day. I don't get any insulin spike, neither do I get any crashes. Another reason to why I'm a lot more productive this month is because I reached a higher level of mental clarity. I feel like I have a lot less brain fog this month. I'm a lot more focused, alert and sharp when it comes to working. Is this because I haven't consumed any glucose this month? 
or is it because of the carnivore diet? I'm not sure, but productivity, focus, alertness have definitely increased. When it comes to training, my training has suffered immensely, especially when it comes to cardio and high intensity training. My strength and hypertrophy training is about the same, but training that requires a little bit more energy, my body just can't handle it right now. It usually goes like this. The first 10 minutes is completely okay, I feel normal, but after 10 minutes of high intensity training, my energy level completely crashes. Instead of jogging, I start walking. Instead of taking one minute's break, I need three to four minutes to recover. And I have this high intensity routine that I do every week. And before doing, starting on this diet, I usually finish the routine at around 26, 27 minutes. Now, after starting this diet, I've done this routine three times, only finish it one time. The time for that was 37 minutes. So that's a lot more than what I usually take to finish the routine. When it comes to my macro and micronutrients, I eat about three and a half thousand to 4,000 calories every day. And my maintenance calorie is only 2,800. But I still haven't gained any weight, which is really strange. And even though this diet lacks fiber and vitamin C, I haven't noticed any symptoms of lacking those nutrients and vitamins yet. But in the last two weeks, I've been experiencing cramps on my leg almost every single day. And I think the reason for that is because this diet lacks calcium. So you do get a little bit of calcium in this diet from meat, and I do get also a little bit from kefir that I drink, but it's not enough to cover the daily recommendation. And the cramp is definitely not because I'm lacking those other electrolytes because I do get enough magnesium, potassium, zinc, and I do definitely get enough sodium. And when it comes to lifestyle, this diet is really good if you want to exercise mental strength because you have to resist all the delicious food out there and you have to be strong enough to eat animal organs which don't taste as nearly as good as an almond croissant or an Italian gelato. Now let's try the sausages. Man, those meaty sausages really fills you up. Liver test. You see the blood there? That's the blood of the liver. I need water. Man, at this point, I'm just trying to chew it till the point where I can swallow it because chewing it even more just just make it worse, man. So I just I'm just trying to swallow it basically. That was she said. <sighs> it's time. Oh, damn, here we go. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! You see this? This is raw liver, one ounce. And today is the day where I eat a raw liver and become a real carnivore. Let's freaking go! <sighs> one, three. One, two, three. That was the most disgusting thing I've ever eaten. How do eat people freaking eat raw organs? I'm glad I did it though. Now I can say I've did it and I can say I'm a real carnivore 
where I have eaten real organs. I'm trying really hard not to throw up now. It's not that my belly is in discomfort, it's just I feel kind of sick after eating this raw. Like, look at this. I'm, that's like dog food. So I'm not going to continue this diet, but I re recommend every single one of you to give this diet a shot for at least 30 days or even longer, especially if you got gut issues or intestine issues, because I think it's true that this diet can fix a lot of the gut issues, because my gut have never felt this good, and I really, I'm really skeptical. I was really skeptical about it. I believe this is the most optimal diet when it comes to gut health. But do I think this is diet? This is the most optimal diet for overall health and well-being? No. But if, when it comes to gut health, yeah, it's amazing how good this diet makes my gut feel. So I highly recommend you give this diet a shot. You don't have to eat raw liver like I did. You don't even have to eat cooked liver. You can actually get like a liver supplement. But give this diet a shot. I think you giving this diet a shot is valuable for you just to learn a little bit more diet and how your body reacts to certain food. Other than that, day 28, raw liver sucked. Two more days, let's freaking go. Okay, look at this. Grass-fed New Zealand ribeye, mm. and Wagyu baller blade. Mm. I want you inside of me. So the reason why I've been a carnivore for over 30 days, which was planned, is because tomorrow I have a doctor appointment. Tomorrow I'm going to the doctor to take a blood test to check out my testosterone. And it's gonna be really freaking interesting to see what the carnivore diet have done to my testosterone levels. Because I have definitely felt a little bit more stressed out this month. So I'm not too optimistic about it. And I know I didn't take a testosterone test in the beginning, but I've taken two testosterone tests in the couple of months before. So I know approximately where my testosterone should be at. So it's gonna be really freaking interesting to see what the carnivore diet have done to my hormone levels. But before that, let's enjoy our last meal. As you can see, there's a lot of butter here. That's because butter is freaking awesome. <laughs> I love butter. <laughs> Penis enlargement operation. I mean, hormone test. <laughs> done. Uh, finally done with the carnivore diet. Feels freaking amazing. Can't wait to indulge in a lot of carbs. Oh, going to be so freaking good. All right, I just got the result of my testosterone test back and the result were shocking. Let me explain. Let's start off with the total testosterone. So my total testosterone while being on a carnivore diet was 558 nanogram each deciliter, which is in normal range, but that's a huge fall of what I used to have in testosterone. So the 18th August, I had 763 nanogram each deciliter while having a normal diet. And the 9th October, I had 1003 nanogram each deciliter. That was also while having a normal diet, but I was on tongue at Ali and ashwagandha then. But that it dropping from 1003 nanogram each deciliter to 558 nanogram each deciliter is almost half the testosterone I used to have when it comes to total testosterone. So 
yeah, quite a dip when it comes to free testosterone, which is the most important metric when it comes to measuring your testosterone because it actually tells you how much of your testosterone is available to get used to build muscle, to grow hair, etc. My free testosterone while being on the carnivore diet was 90 picogram each milliliter. So in the 18th August, my free testosterone while being on a normal diet was 157 picogram each milliliter. And the 9th October, while I'm being on Tongat Ali and Ashwagandha, my free testosterone was at 107 picogram each milliliter. So both my free testosterone and my total testosterone have decreased. And this is actually the lowest I've measured my free testosterone and total testosterone in my whole life. So that's fascinating, but it wasn't surprising to me, to be fair, because like I mentioned a couple times throughout this video, throughout this month, while being on a carnivore diet, I felt like my cortisol levels were through the roof. And I feel like it's really easy to get stressed out when you're in a state of ketosis or in a state of adrenaline, which you are very often while being on a carnivore diet. And I think it's because of my cortisol levels that is the main reason to why my testosterone have decreased. So this diet is so good in so many ways. And for many of you, this is the right diet. But I don't think it's the optimal diet for everything, especially not for optimizing your hormone levels. Here is a delicious berry salad. This is a banana. This is an avocado. But we are still going to continue with the principle of the carnivore diet. Continue eating red meat, a lot of eggs, and of course organ meat, most nutritious food you can find. And of course we're gonna have other carnivore food as in fish and also bacon. I don't think there is a single diet that is perfect for us all. I think since we are different, the perfect diet for us all is our own custom elimination diet. A diet where we have eliminated all type of food and drinks that can cause us inflammation and that is not good for us. At the same time, have all the type of food in this diet that can complement our lifestyle. I am so happy that I did the carnivore diet because it fixed my gut issue that I've been struggling with for years. Now I can feel normal without taking prescribed drugs and my digestive system haven't felt this good in forever. <laughs> Honestly, I'm really happy that I did it because of the health benefits and also because I learned a ton while being on this diet. But I don't think this is the optimal diet when it comes to your cortisol levels, your hormones levels in general, or when it comes to performing in training and sleep. That is why I am going to start introducing berries, banana, and avocado. Because I want to see if these fruits can help me with the problem I have faced with the carnivore diet. And I'm going to introduce them one at a time. So that I'm certain that these type of food won't take away the major benefits that I've gotten from the carnivore diet, that they instead only complement the carnivore diet for me. If you want to know how to create a custom elimination diet that is perfect for your health and that fits your lifestyle, well, I'm in the progress of doing it myself now and I'll post a video pretty soon where I'll show you step by step how to proceed when creating your own custom elimination diet. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on that banger. And if you want to continue to improve yourself, Check out this video, stay healthy, keep driving, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace!